Assalamu alaikum uh, to everyone. I strongly believe that every one of you uh, must have attempted test 5 and now you are watching lecture on this test 5. Okay, at the end of this video we will decide what needs to be done after test 5. Let's attempt this question first. Again, I'll try my best the, to keep the video short, as short as possible. Knowingly that exams are very near, okay? Just a minute. Carry out the work requested in the email from your manager. The following marks are available. Schedule prepared by mail gives you 11 marks. That's a lot. The following movement in the retail price index should be used when necessary. They have given us a retail price index. Okay. Then requirement B says payment to Gale gives you 9 marks. Non-disclosure of income gives you 5 marks. So let's read the question. Uh, looks a little bit easier question than others. You should assume that today's date is 9 June 2022. So there is no harm we, we, we assume. Okay. Your manager has had a meeting with Gail. Gail owns the whole of ordinary share capital of Arrow Limited. Gail is the actually owner of Arrow Limited. An email from your manager setting out the matters. Discuss in the meeting and schedule prepared by Mill. A junior member of your firm's tax department are set out below. Email from your manager, date 9 June 2022, Gail. Gail was born in 1975 and is resident and domicile in the UK. We know that one thing. Whoever is resident as well as domicile in the UK, that person needs to pay tax on his or her worldwide income. She owns the whole of ordinary share capital of Arrow Limited and works full time as a director of the company. A Limited owns whole of the ordinary share capital of Zephyr Limited. Now what is happening? Gail owns 100% ownership in Arrow Limited and Arrow Limited is the one who owns 100% holding in Zephyr Limited. So it means that A Limited and Zephyr Limited they are in 75% capital gain group, they are in 75% loss relief group. If provided that both are in UK, both are in UK. A Limited and Z Limited both are UK resident companies. So they are making 75% capital gain group as well as 75% loss relief group. Historical transaction in respect of A Limited and Z Limited. What happened in the past between A and Z Limited? Examiner is giving us the information. All transaction took place at market value. Okay. January 1st, January 2014, A Limited acquired the whole of the ordinary share capital of Z Limited for 180,000. So it was 1st January 2014 when A Limited acquired whole of the ordinary share capital means 100% holding they took in Z Limited for 180,000. October 18, A Limited sold building. Samson building to Z Limited for 1,10,000. A Limited purchased this building for 75,000 on December 10. Now listen and listen carefully. What is happening on 1st October 2018? I'm explaining dear student and you need to write in your own wordings, in your own words. On October 2018, A Limited sold building. The name of the building is Simpson building. To Z Limited for one lakh ten thousand. Actually, this one ten is not relevant. Logically, what is happening? A Limited is selling a building to Z Limited, and both are part of seventy-five percent capital gain group. So, when one member of seventy-five percent capital gain group sells asset to another member of seventy-five percent capital gain group, then transaction take place at no gain, no loss. Logically, the sale proceed is equal to the index cost. Index cost means cost plus indexation allowance. And the maximum, maximum indexation allowance which we can take is from the date of acquisition till December 17. Repeat. 
the maximum time period for indexation allowance which we can take is from the date of acquisition which is 1st December 2010 till December 17 because after December 17 you will not get any indexation allowance. So logically whatever price A has taken from Z that is irrelevant. So A limited and Z limited both are part of 75% capital gain group. So simply the transaction definitely in the past took place at no gain no loss. And sale proceed is equal to index cost and the cost index cost means cost plus indexation allows. On 1st March 2010, A Limited sold brand to Z Limited. Now they're selling a brand to Z Limited for like 70,000. Its market value at that time was to like 30,000 A Limited purchase. Again, the same explanation. Now what is happening? Now Z Limited is selling. A Limited is selling brand to Z Limited for 170. Again, this 170 is irrelevant. Both are a member of a uh, 75% capital gain group so obviously no gain no loss and obviously the transaction uh, no gain no loss means simply we assume that sale proceed is equal to index cost proposed transaction all transaction will take place at market value now we are talking about the future transaction gale intends to raise a substantial sum of money by carrying out the following transaction gale Actually, who is the owner of Arrow Limited and obviously ultimately the owner of Z Limited as well? He owns, he needs a substantial amount, sum of money. So, what, how he's going to raise the amount? 24th June 2022. Z Limited will sell the Samson building to an unrelated purchaser for 140,000. Rollover relief will not be claimed in respect of this disposal. Now what is happening? How Gale will raise the finance? Gale is saying Z Limited will sell the Samson building obviously uh, outside the group for 1 lakh 40. Roller relief is not available. It's not claim in fact in respect of this disposal. Z Limited will pay a dividend to Arrow Limited equal to the post tax proceed of this sale. Now listen, listen carefully. What is happening? Z Limited is going to sell Z Limited is going to sell that Samson building for one lakh forty thousand. Okay. Whatever the chargeable gain comes on that chargeable gain, corporation tax will be paid, and then the sale proceed after corporation tax will be given to A Limited as dividend. Now listen and listen carefully. When one organization, when one company gives dividend to another company, so within corporation tax, it is exempt. So whatever amount of dividend Z Limited is going to give to A Limited, that is exempt. So A Limited is not going to pay any tax. So simply Z Limited is going to sell the building. Whatever the chargeable gain comes, on that chargeable gain, corporation tax will be paid. And then the sale proceed minus the corporation tax will be given as dividend to A Limited. And obviously, on that dividend, uh, A Limited will not be paying any tax because in corporation tax, dividend is exempt. On July 2022, A Limited sell the whole of the ordinary share capital of Z Limited for 250000 Very important point. Now, what is happening on July 2022? A Limited will sell the whole of the ordinary share capital of Z Limited for 250000 Z Limited will be sold on July 2022 for 2 lakh 50 thousand. Okay. Now listen and listen carefully. The first thing, if we are selling Z Limited on July 2022, now the question arises: What about this transaction, the brand one? Because when you will be selling Z Limited, at that time obviously Z Limited will be holding that brand. And initially the brand was sold due to 75% capital gain group, no gain, no loss. And now Z Limited is leaving the 75% capital gain group and obviously still holding that brand. So, D grouping charge will arise. 
but due to but due to substantial shareholding exemption sse t grouping charge will not arise because of ss availability of sse repeat a limited is selling whole of ordinary share capital of z limited for 250000 the first question arises what about on 1st march 2022 uh, when we sold that brand to z limited at no gain no loss on that brand d grouping charge will arise but due to substantial shareholding exemption availability sse no d grouping charge arises plus there will be no capital gain there will be no corporation tax on the disposal of z limited reason is sse and when do we get sse you basically you will get sse when you are having at least 10 percent holding in the disposal company which is a trading company and your ownership period must be 12 consecutive months in the six year prior to sale so SSE exemption is only available when you are having at least 10 percent holding in the last 12 months out of six years before the disposal okay so simply on brand d grouping charge is not arising due to SSE and whatever the capital gain comes on the disposal of z limited is again no capital gain no corporation x arises because of sse now there is one question now listen and listen to the question some of the student they think they might be thinking sir on july 2022 when we are selling a limited when a limited is selling whole of the ordinary share capital of z limited and we are talking about d grouping charge on the brand why we are not talking about the degrouping charge on the building there's a reason because before leaving 75 percent capital gain group z limited leaves the 75 percent capital gain group on 1st july 2022 but before this that date prior to this date that is 24 june 2022 so prior to 1st july 2022 z limited will have already sold the Samson building to an unrelated party outside the group. So no D grouping charge question arises on the building. Because when Z Limited is leaving the group, when Z Limited is leaving the group, at that time Z Limited is only holding the brand. When Z Limited is leaving the group, at that time they are not holding the uh, building. They are just holding the brand. So that is why I'm discussing the degrouping charge issue only on the brand. I'm not discussing any degrouping charge on the building because logically the building is already sold by Z Limited, Z for Limited before leaving the group. Okay. So that is the discussion of the degrouping charge will only uh, relates to will only relate to a brand. Okay, now what? And Another point which you have to mention is that is SSE substantial shareholding exemption due to substantial shareholding exemption uh, whatever the capital again comes on the disposal of Z limited no corporation tax arises 15 July 2022 all of the cash realized by a limited as a result of transaction one and two will be paid will be paid to Gale in the form of either dividend or bonus so whatever the cash will be raised entire cash will be given to Gale in the form of uh, either dividend or bonus now let's see what they are saying please carry out the following work schedule prepared by mill I can confirm that there are no computational errors in the schedule but I suspect that mill will have made a few technical errors okay please identify and explain any errors in the schedule explain whether or not notes to the schedule are or are not correct and calculate the correct amount to of the total uh, cash available to pay to gail payment to gail calculate the additional tax and nic 
नेशनल इंश्योरेंस कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ड्यू एज रिड्यूज बाई एनी कॉर्पोरेशन टैक्स सेविंग्स If all of the cash realized by A Limited as a result of proposed transaction one and two is paid to Gale in the form of one is bonus and another is dividend, Gale's annual tax liability in respect of her annual salary eighty five thousand from A Limited is all they have already calculated. Income tax liability on a salary of eighty five thousand is twenty one thousand four hundred and thirty two. This will be her only source of income in the tax year 22-23, other than any payments received from A Limited, as outlined above. Okay. Non-disclosure of income. Gail has realized that she has not declared some of her income in respect of the tax year 17-18. When your client is not declaring some of the income, so obviously the tax advisor will be in danger. Okay. You need to convince your client. Please disclose uh, the undisclosed income, and you should. And being a uh, tax advisor, you should be convincing your client that please disclose the undisclosed income to HMRC by yourself. If you don't want to disclose it, give us permission. We will disclose. Don't worry at all. But if your client is not listening to you, is not still willing to disclose uh, undisclosed income to HMRC. then your tax firm should not be giving tax services to such a client and you should refuse working for gail uh, without giving any reason to hmrc gail has realized that she has not declared some of her income in respect of the tax year 1718 as a result of this her income tax liability for that tax year was understated I have already explained the interest and penalties which may be charged in respect of this error. State the other matter which need to be considered. I just discussed that. Uh, the answer of C should be that Gail should disclose undisclosed income to HMRC. If not, then Gail should give us permission that we can disclose undisclosed income to HMRC. And if Gail is still not listening to us, then we should not be acting as tax advisor for Gail. and uh, there's no need to give any reason to hmrc just inform to hmrc that no more we are working uh, for gail schedule prepared by mill cash will be available to pay gail as a result of proposed transaction 1 and 2 sale of simpson building 1 lakh 40 okay less proceed cost 110 no 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 this actually your Cost will be the original cost plus indexation allowance. You cannot take the indexation allowance till June two thousand twenty-two. So this is incorrect, obviously, and we don't pay any tax on dividend. No tax is paid on dividend because when one company gives one corporation, one company gives tax to another company that is exempt within corporation tax. Only this two lakh fifty is okay. Because whatever the sale proceed from Zephyr Limited is coming on that, uh, whatever the capital gain comes, no tax will be paid due to SSE. Okay. I do not think there will be a chargeable gain on the sale of Zephyr Limited due to SSE. Yes, I think there will be a degrouping charge on the brand, but I don't know how to compute it. There is no need to calculate degrouping charge. You will be just discussing that degrouping charge will arise. Because Z Limited is leaving uh, within six years of getting the brand at no gain, no loss. Z Limited is leaving the seventy-five percent capital gain group, so degrouping charge will arise. But due to SSE, no uh, degrouping charge arises. So these are the few explanation layers to which you need to tell your examiner. Now let us. I'm just going for the calculation part now in order to save the time. Let's go for A schedule. A uh, schedule prepared by Mill. Schedule. So simply cash available to as a result of transaction one and two. 
कैश अवेलेबल टू पे टू गिल फ्रॉम ट्रांजैक्शन वन एंड टू सेल प्रोसीड फ्रॉम सैमसन बिल्डिंग सेल प्रोसीड फ्रॉम सैमसन बिल्डिंग That is one lakh forty thousand. Now let us deduct the cost. We will have to take the original cost. That was cost to Arrow Limited, and simply add the indexation allowance from the date of acquisition till December seventeen. Because after December seventeen, you will not get any uh, indexation allowance. Less cost. So cost to Arrow Limited. Originally it was for seventy five thousand. Simply add indexation allowance. And we'll take the indexation allowance. Let me repeat from December ten to December seventeen. Because December this ten is the date of acquisition, and after December seventeen, no indexation allowance is available. Multiply by the indexation factor, which is given to us two one eight. So seventy five thousand to zero point two one eight gives us sixteen thousand three hundred and fifty. So seventy five thousand plus, you need to use a calculator. But obviously, you should be doing this on Excel. Uh, I believe I can bring more clarity over here. That's why I'm solving here. So seventy-five thousand plus sixteen thousand three fifty gives us ninety-one thousand three fifty. So from one lakh forty thousand, from one lakh forty thousand, I'm going to deduct ninety-one thousand three fifty. It gives me the chargeable gain of forty-eight thousand six fifty. Chargeable gain is forty-eight thousand six fifty. Corporation tax rate is simply nineteen percent. Forty-eight thousand six fifty into nineteen percent. Nine thousand two hundred and forty-four. Now, whatever we are raising from the dispos disposal of Simpson Limited. After giving the corporation tax, entire amount will be paid to A Limited as dividend, and dividend income from one company to another company is exempt. So simply dividend paid to A Limited. Z Limited is paying dividend to A Limited. Dividend paid to Arrow Limited. The sale proceed is one lakh forty thousand, and the corporation tax is. Nine thousand two hundred and forty-four. So one lakh forty minus nine two four nine two double four gives us one lakh thirty thousand seven fifty-six. So from transaction one, we are getting this uh, amount as dividend to for A Limited one lakh thirty thousand seven fifty-six. On this one lakh thirty thousand seven fifty-six, A Limited will not be paying any tax because Even income from one company to another is exempt. Sale of Z Limited does not result in any tax because of availability of SSE substantial shareholding exemption. Sale of Z Limited. Sale proceeds two lakh fifty. So we have one lakh thirty thousand seven fifty six plus two lakh fifty thousand. So the total comes to three lakh eighty thousand seven fifty six. This is the total available cash which is uh, available for Gale, obviously. Total cash available.
सो टोटल कैश अवेलेबल फॉर गेल इज थ्री लैख एटी थाउजेंड सेवन फिफ्टी सिक्स नाउ दिस दिस इज पार्ट ए विच गिव्स यू इलेवन मार्क्स बट यू हैव टू एक्सप्लेन वट आर द थिंग्स विच यू नीड टू एक्सप्लेन इज दैट वेन वन कंपनी ऑफ सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट कैपिटल गेन ग्रुप सेल्स एसेट टू अनदर कंपनी देन इट इज ऑन नो गेन नो लॉस एंड सेकेंड यू नीड टू डिस्कस डी ग्रुपिंग चार्ज एंड थर्ड इज एस एस सी so there are just three things which you need to discuss before this calculation 75% capital gain group rule second uh degrouping charge and third is sse and after the, that the whole calculation which i have just uh did in front of you now let's go to requirement b which says payment to gail payment to gail so 3 lakh 80756 either will be giving this to gail as bonus or as dividend so let's deal as bonus payment of payment of a bonus we are giving 3 lakh 80756 as bonus to Mr. Gill, he is already having annual uh, employment income eighty five thousand, which is given to us. Employment income given is eighty five thousand. Obviously, bonus is also a part of employment income. So, bonus is three lakh eighty thousand seven fifty six. Net income eighty five thousand plus three lakh eighty thousand seven fifty six gives us four lakh sixty five thousand seven fifty six. Ah, obviously, you will not be getting any. You will not be getting any ah uh, personal allowance because your adjusted net income is more than one lakh twenty five thousand one hundred and forty. So simply, personal allowance will be zero. So entire income becomes your taxable income. Entire income becomes your taxable income. Because of this, we are having personal allowance zero. So your taxable income is four lakh sixty five thousand seven fifty six. Now simply can let us calculate tax. The basic rate band is thirty seven thousand seven hundred. I have to take twenty percent of this. Seven thousand five hundred and forty. From one lakh fifty thousand, we need to deduct thirty seven thousand seven hundred. From one lakh fifty, let's use the calculator. One lakh fifty thousand is the limit of higher rate band. Minus thirty seven thousand seven hundred gives us one lakh twelve thousand three hundred. We will apply forty percent on this. Just apply forty percent. You will be getting forty four thousand nine hundred and twenty. So four lakh sixty five thousand seven fifty six minus one lakh fifty thousand. The remaining balance is three lakh fifteen thousand seven fifty six, and let's take forty five percent of this. Let's take forty-five percent. It is coming one lakh forty-two thousand ninety. One lakh forty-two thousand ninety. So seven five four zero plus four four nine two zero plus one four two zero nine zero. One lakh ninety-four thousand five hundred and fifty. So now the income tax liability is coming one lakh ninety-four thousand five hundred and fifty. Examiner has already given us uh, existing employment income, which is eighty-five thousand, and examiner has already calculated uh, income tax liability on eighty-five thousand, which is twenty-one thousand four hundred thirty. We just need to calculate additional income tax liability, additional NICs. Less existing. Income tax liability 
on employment income 85000 employment income 85000 on employment income 85000 examiner has already calculated 21432 for us so let's see what is the additional income tax liability additional income tax liability is 173000 118 this is additional income tax additional income tax now let us calculate additional class 1 employee NIC additional class 1 employee NIC simply the amount of the bonus is 3 like 80,756 we'll take 2% of this it is coming 7,615 additional class 1 employer NIC additional class 1 employers NIC employer will be paying 13.8% on this 3,80,756 into 13.8 why employees paying class 1 additional NIC because bonus is a cash benefit bonus is a cash benefit it is coming 52,544 now listen and listen carefully there will be a corporation tax saving as well when company is going to give 380,756 as bonus to Gale, that results in tax saving. In addition to that, organization will save income tax on this class 1 employer NIC. So let us uh, deduct corporation tax saving. Corporation tax saving. Since company is giving 380,576 as bonus, that will result in tax saving. And 52544, five, this also results in tax saving into 19%. So the corporation tax saving is 82,377. So here comes your additional taxes if bonus is paid. Additional taxes when bonus is paid additional taxes so 173118 plus 7615 plus 52544 minus 828282 uh, let me do the correction 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 8 327 so please correct it it is 82327 I'm getting 150,000 now the same amount which is 380,756 if it is given as bonus payment of 380756 as now dividend we have already dealt with bonus now dividend so let's deal we already have employment income of 85,000 employment income is 85,000 simply take the dividend income three eight zero seven fifty six it becomes four six five seven fifty six again the personal allowance will be zero of course entire amount is your taxable income
entire amount is your taxable income okay so let's calculate tax on a basic rate band we uh, let me put this income tax 37700 into 20% gives us 7540 now listen and listen carefully dear student uh, this mr gale is having employment income of 85000 and 380756 is given as dividend. Dividend is having different tax rate and uh, employment income is having different tax rate. So from 85,000, we need to deduct 37,700. So let's see how much, what is the remaining employment income on which we have to ta apply tax rate. So repeat, the employment income total is 85,000. From 85, I'm deducting. 37,700. Previously, we did not do this because previously uh, additional amount was given as dividend and when additional amount was given as dividend, that is also a part of employment income. So, in previously, we did not do like this. Right now, the additional income is given as dividend. So, that is why we are doing, uh, we are first calculating employment income separately and then we'll go for dividend income. So employment income is 85,000 out of that 85 we have applied tax on 37,700 so the remaining amount is 47,300 on this 47,300 you have to use 40 percent it is coming 18,920 now we will move to dividend income and in case of dividend income we know one thing very well what is that uh, irrespective of individuals <coughs> sorry tax paying status you will get nil rate band of 2000 irrespective of individuals tax paying status so simply nil rate band dividend income 2000 to 0 percent is 0 now let us check how much space is left in uh, higher rate band because in higher rate band dividend income tax rate is 32.5 percent let me show you how much is left higher rate band limit is one like fifty thousand we have already used thirty seven thousand seven hundred we have used after that forty seven thousand three hundred and now we have used two thousand as well so the remaining amount is just sixty three thousand so in higher rate band, uh, still the remaining limit is there, but that is only 63,000. On this 63,000, applicable tax rate is 32.5%. Just apply 32.5%. If I take 32.5% of this, I'm getting 20,475. Now, after uh, higher rate band, whatever amount is of dividend income is left, that falls in additional rate band, and dividend income which comes in additional rate band, applicable tax rate is 38.1%. So, how much dividend income we have already taxed out of 380,756? We utilize 2000 in nil rate band, we utilize 63,000 in higher rate band. So let us see how much is left. 380,756 minus uh, 2000 minus 63,000. It is coming 315,756. So simply uh, 315,756 into 38.1%. 3,15,756 into 38.1% gives us 1,20,303. Uh, Here comes the total income tax liability. Total income tax liability. You just need to add all these. 7540189202 this 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 we are getting 167238 
existing income tax liability is 21,432 less existing income tax liability is 21,432. So here comes the total additional tax. Total additional taxes when dividend is paid because no NIC arises. It is uh, one lakh forty-five thousand eight zero five. Why it is happening? Because in case of dividend, no NIC contribution imp consequence of implication will arise. Simply, there will be there will be no national insurance contribution by Gale and company when dividend is given in part C relates to the disclosure of error What do you have to write for disclosure of error? I did mention, and it is mentioned in the question, there is no need to write about the penalties because those things, uh, they have already been explained to Gail. Simply you have to write that uh, our organization, our firm should request Mr. Gail uh, to disclose the undisclosed income to HMRC. If not, then Gail should give us permission that we can disclose undisclosed income to HMRC. But if Gail is still not listening to us and if Gail does not still uh, want to disclose the undisclosed income, then our tax consistency firm should not be working for Gail anymore. And there's no need to give the reason to HMRC, but we should not be working. That's it. These are the things which you need to discuss. So, dear student, that was all about uh, test 5. Now, oh, what are we left with? What I'm going to do. I'm going to share test 6 with you guys and after sharing text, test 6 uh, within one or two days of sharing test 6 I'll share the mock as well then obviously I'll give you exactly one week to attempt uh, mock and test 6 both as well First, I'm going to share the test 6 and then within uh, one or two days after sharing the test 6, I will share the mock. Okay. So, I strongly believe that, the, see, the all the tests which we are conducting, it is for your benefit. So, you should be properly attempting them, you should be properly contributing in these tests, then you will get a really good benefit. So, simply. Thank you very much for watching this lecture. Have a nice life. Assalamu alaikum.